Welcome back to my garden. My name is Robin. I garden in Zone 6 in Northwest Connecticut. So I am over the next uh, three, four days, whatever. So you maybe <laughs> going to see me in different changes of clothing and it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be real. Uh, I have a lot of plants to put in. I have new annuals. I have new perennials and I have new shrubs. I have areas that I'm reworking a little bit from last year. So if you've been following me, you know, I did some new beds last year. Um, it is going to be what it's going to be. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and bring you along for as much as I can. I've got my augers already. Um, I have kind of got everything out and placed where I want to put it. So hopefully I don't forget things. Um, and I'm just going to see what I can get done. I'm working by myself uh, for the next couple days and uh, it's going to be a long slog. So um, Unlike some of these uh, other girls who are on YouTube, uh, I'm not 30. Um, uh, I don't have long, pretty ponytails and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, gorgeous makeup. Gardening is hot and sweaty. It is what it is. Um, I do have a long shirt on to um, help with uh, bugs and bites. I do get mosquito bites really badly and stuff. And sunburn. Uh, sunburn's not my issue, but um, a lot of things going on here in the garden. And uh, hopefully I can take you along with me and uh, show you just, you know, what is a day, a week <laughs> in the life of a gardener. So come on along. Before we start walking around, I just wanna say, one, all the plants are already placed where I'm thinking I'm gonna put them. So they're not sitting on the back of a truck somewhere, so I can't review them all right then and there. I've tried to put the specifications. If you have a question about a plant uh, that I'm putting in, please let me know. I tried not to go crazy duplicating you know, my first walk around where things are going to where they ended up. Um, but please, any questions, just ask. Uh, the other thing is, this is a very weird year for weather. Um, it's been absolutely gorgeous the last week. We're supposed to have a 30 degree drop in temperature now. So there are plants that I worried about that I've now put in the ground. Uh, you know, you can't run out and cover things. If you have damage, you have damage. Um, I'm having enormous trouble with one, my, um, with one group of cat mint, Nepeta walkers low that I never have trouble with. But in the last couple of years in this one place in my garden, uh, it's dying off. I put some pictures on Facebook, um, if you're having trouble with Nepeta Walker's Low, can you let me know where it's yellowing and completely dying out in the center and that's actually spreading to other ones. So let's start taking a walk around and um, see what plants I'm putting in. Again, you know, the garden is always evolving and things are always changing and um, I'm sure it's the same in your garden too. So let's, let's get going. So first, I'm um, not sure if you can, how clearly you can see that, but it's not really important. It's more, uh, I have a master list of what's going in what bed, um, and I've changed things around a million times. So I've got plants, uh, you know, just stuck in different places. Hopefully it's they're where I intended them to go, but if not, we're just gonna work around it. Um, you will notice uh, as I make my way around beds, not only do I have things that are going in the ground, but you can see that I have, um, my dahlias are in pots. Uh, the good part with that is I'm going to be able to move them around as I want this year. If something's not getting enough sun, I can move it. Uh, if something's not getting enough water, I can move it. Um, if I don't like the color there, I can move it. So that's my plan right now. So I'm going to just walk around right now and show you what I'm going to be putting in the ground and then hopefully as I get it in the ground I can show it to you. So I've got Pensimum Midnight Masquerade. I've got another Shenandoah grass. I don't know, I swear I had three of them in here. Uh, one of them doesn't seem to be here. Um, I'm putting in three Proven Winners. Uh, Color Spryer's Crystal Blue Salvia. Let's see if I can actually get that to... So you can see that. Okay. 
So I have ruby ribbons over here, and ruby ribbons over here. Uh, have not finished weeding this bed. I have an Agastache Blue Fortune that I moved over here. That's coming up, but it's a little slower than I'd like it to be. Got a bunch of Wizard of Oz in there, so let's see what else. It's still in containers. All right, got some GM Triflorum right here. I really wanted these. <laughs> so I'm very excited about getting those. So that's gonna go in there. What's coming over here? Believe it or not, I still have some tulips. Isn't this crazy? Oh my gosh. Oh my God, my Jersey is gonna actually bloom for the first time. What are the odds of that? After I was telling you guys that it never blooms. It hasn't ever bloomed. I have some ladies mantle here that I think I need to divide up. I had some, this bed has gotten a lot of vole damage. And so I've got some holes here. Now I've got some still bees. I've got a lot of ladies mantle. I've got heuchera that the voles are spreading around, which I don't mind. Um, but I'm going to add a bleeding heart because I put in a white bleeding heart last year, even wrapped it in netting and it didn't survive. So that's what's going to go in over here. Nothing going in over there. Over here I have, let's see, I've got mums going in. Now these are perennial mums, not annual mums. Got some dahlias. The dahlias are going to stay in the pots. Got some more mums, got some more dahlias. Um, I'm adding some geraniums, perennial geraniums. This is Bevan's variety. Uh, I have not been able to find Walker's Low this year, Capin. So this is Junior Walker. Uh, I had two that died. You know, things happen. Uh, you know, everything in this entire bed, uh, if you'll remember my video from last year, everything in this bed was brand new. This bed didn't even exist last March. So things are going to happen. They're just going to happen. You just got to take it one day at a time. Um, just going to show you. Got a silver maple at the Trade Secrets show the other day. This is going to be beautiful. I love it. And it's going to be a really nice accent here. All right. This juniper. Oh, God. This juniper is coming out tomorrow. Uh, today is Friday the 26th. So I'm starting you know, my Memorial Day weekend planting and digging and all that kind of stuff. I've got a um, dwarf Mugo pine that's going to go in this area. And I also have a winter gem boxwood. Got some foxgloves. These things need to get in the ground. I mean, I do have a sprinkler system. Um, however, um, you know, things, it, it's getting really hard to take care of these things that are in containers and keep them watered so they don't die. But the uh, Baptisia, look how beautiful that is, blooming. Look how pretty that is. Now these are my favorite coleus. Uh, pineapple brandy, these are the Color Blaze series. They grow so beautifully. Wicked Witch coleus and pineapple brandy. Um, I think those will look really nice here in front of the um, peonies, because obviously once the peonies finish blooming, then there's nothing else. So Coral Charm looks like it's literally getting ready to pop. And I'll have to do a video to show you. Remember all the shrubs that I really pinched back or cut back or seriously coppiced? Well, here's one, and you can see how much growth it's put on. I think this is Sarah Bernhardt getting ready to bloom. Got Festiva Maxima here. This is an Itopeony called Canary Brilliance. It's a gorgeous yellow. I love this. Um, so that's all doing really well. So annuals that are going in the front here. Sorry, tripping over the rocks. Um, I've got uh, a rock and deep purple salvia here and supertunia. Yeah, supertunia, right? Supertunia blue veined. That's going to go here below Spirea ogon. Uh, got luminary backlights fox, which is a nice like panicle type hydrangea. It's going to go behind my hibiscus. Now, don't panic if your hibiscus haven't started growing yet. You can see mine is just 
just coming out. And they're very late to break dormancy, sort of like bud leaves. Um, I've got a mum, whoops, I've got a mum over here. I've got an Alstromeria over there. I've got more, still be dark side of the moon. I cannot find my favorite play in the blue salvia. I managed to get my hands on one. Um, so this is an annual salvia with it called Wendy's Wish, and I'm gonna do Supertunia bubblegum. And then again, I have more dahlias that I've popped all over the yard. I lost count of how many dahlias I have. Um, but this way I can move them around based on, oh, I thought that was gonna be nice with that, but I don't like that color, so I can change things up. So let's go this way. I cut down the tulips uh, and the fritillaria that were in this yard. Started to cut the uh, daffodils, not the, not the foliage, don't cut your foliage, um, but didn't get very far. Got, I'm replacing the Shenandoah grass, because this is not the grass, <laughs> this is weed, this is weeds. There is Shenandoah actually growing here and here, but it is so taken over with these violets that I keep pulling out and pulling out and pulling out. Look how lovely, while we're over here, look how lovely the camassias are. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love these. And they look so beautiful with the Dordogne um, tulips and the Queen of Night. Last year I tried to separate these because I feel like they're just uh, choking themselves. Um, I probably should have separated them even more. Uh, I've got some cat's pajamas, nepeta. I've got some rubrum grass. So I'm trying to put things in places that will hide the uh, daffodil foliage. I had Sir Winston Churchill in here. I absolutely love it. Of course, I'm absolutely loving the, the bearded iris. I added a lot of bearded iris this year. Um, these that are blooming right now are concertina and it's called Blue Rebloom Iris. I've got Mount Everest, alliums blooming in here. Um, I have, I've had to replace, I put in spun silk daisies last year. Only one of them survived. Um, I'm trying to rehabilitate the city line Mars that somewhere in the process, maybe with the greenhouse, um, I pulled out and was trying to rehab. Uh, I've got a container here that's waiting to go somewhere and be planted up. I'm trying to empty out my greenhouse because it's very warm in here. Um, I have a new climbing rose that'll get out. Here's some yarrow pomegranate. So I'm going to try and set up a camera and take you along and see what I can possibly get done today. Like I said, it's going to be real. It's not going to be pretty. And um, it is what it is.
Okay, it's the end of the day. It's almost five o'clock. I've been out here all day. Um, I'm going to do the last few and then I'll try and show you everything that I did today. It's Memorial Day weekend, um, and I wanted to give you a final wrap up. I've gotten almost everything in the ground, uh, just a couple of things. So I wanted to walk around, show you where things ended up, um, and go over maybe why I put certain things in certain areas. I still have a few dahlias to put out, um, but for the most part, those projects are done, and now I can get back to uh, general maintenance, and I still have frost damage from two weeks ago to clean up. It's a little windy today. It's beautiful, a beautiful day. Can't believe this has been an amazing Memorial Day weekend. Um, but it's a little windy, so I hope we're not going to have an issue with the wind for this part of the video. Hope you had a great Memorial Day weekend because obviously this video won't come out till the end of the week. Over here underneath the Dawn Redwood. Let me get back here, sorry. Um, GM Triflorum, I put in three of those. Uh, this has got a gorgeous, I'm going to see if I can find a, a picture for you. Um, I absolutely have been trying to get my hands on this for quite a long time. The bloom is so beautiful. It's wispy. The first time I saw it was at Lori Gardens in Chicago, and I've wanted one ever since. So it's just starting to bloom, but just beautiful. So I put in three of those. Now on the back side of the Dawn Redwood, um, I've got two very large hostas, uh, the Queen of the Prairie um, that I showed you that we pulled out. The rest of this entire bed was, it was just suffocating everything. I have a beautiful Siberian iris there that was given to me a long time ago by a friend. I added three drops of Jupiter and I added a new gen boxwood. So that's all that went in this end of the bed. You can see the Viburnum Mariesi is actually still blooming, as is the entire hedge of Viburnum Mariesi, but it's, it's going quick, it's going quick. So let's go look at the next area. Yay, shade. Okay, so I had to replace, I've never, almost never had uh, Nepeta Walker's Low die on me, but right here I had two dyes, so I replaced them. The only thing I could find was Junior Walker, uh, so I have two of those. I added some more uh, perennial geraniums. This is called Bevan's Variety. It's got like a pink flower on it. And I have, so you can see there's the new one. And this is Roseanne, so that's got a little purple flower on it. So I added three of those into this bed. And like I said, there's, there's Roseanne. I also added a, a perennial mum. This one's called Powder River. It's got a, a white, a white mum flower. And then I've got some dahlias and pots in here. My stock. Um, in the raised beds. I added some celosia in here also. I think these need a little fertilizer. Broccoli's doing really well. 
I put out the tom some tomatoes yesterday. Boy, are those towers cockeyed. Um, but I really like these towers. I got them from Gardener's Supply, love them. Um, also had to replace my um, climbing rose that was here. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I have so much damage from voles and rabbits and stuff like that. And it just, it, it, there was, there's maybe this much. So I left because I was watching Laura from Garden Answer and she had the same comment that I did. You know what, if a plant's not working, I don't, I don't have the patience. I don't want to be bothered spending, you know, like three years rehabilitating it. Um, I will try to rehabilitate things, but not in their spot. So potatoes are growing like crazy. I've already added more dirt to them. So I guess I need to keep doing that. This is my first year with potatoes, but oh wow, look, Bupleurum, Feverfew, Larkspur, uh, Bachelor Buttons. I'm very excited that my Cool Flowers project has worked. Um, in this end of the bed, I added two more um, perennial mums. So there's October Glory, and that one is Cheerleader. So I've got to say, I'm very excited with the changes that I've done this year. Um, I feel like things are really coming together more and more and more. And you know what? Every year things change. I change things every year. And if you're a gardener, you do the same. Um, it's sometimes something's working, things change. Our climate has changed. Something that worked when you put it in maybe doesn't work as well now. Um, and it's, it's, that's what gardening is. So in this bed right here, and here's the Viburnum Mariesi, I added another uh, Shenandoah grass because I swear to God I put in three. I don't know what on earth could have possibly happened to that one. I think what might have happened, frankly, is we were pulling Pachysandra out of here. We had so much Pachysandra. Again, it was just pulling the life out of everything around it. I have some Wizard of Oz Veronica's here. So I added three Penstemon Midnight Masquerade. That's a Clematis called Diana's Delight got two ruby ribbons grasses and I added three salvia crystal blue uh, to this bed and one uh, let's see I added one cone flower double coated butter pecan having trouble finding some um, cone flowers this year different ones that I wanted here's a container with skyrocket grass a begonia uh, sweet potato vine and this is let's see this is persimmon supertunia all right let's walk down lupins these haven't gone in the ground yet <laughs> but check out the burnet is the burnet is blooming But the, I have two lupins to get in the ground here um, today. Things have got to get in the ground because it's just um, keeping things in pots. It's too hard to keep them watered. Um, the Baptisia is gorgeous. The Salvia Caradona, which is my favorite Salvia, um, that's blooming. I added two foxgloves. It's Camelot Lavender. And I added an, a winter gem boxwood and a dwarf mugo pine. So now if, if you'll remember, there was that huge dead juniper. And while I was working the other day, the guy came a day early to take it out. Oh yeah, so excited to see these things gone. I feel like it just opened up the area because, you know, I have... The large Camisiparis here, I have the Kusa here. I don't feel like I really needed to replace that. And the, it just gave this area room to breathe. I have beautiful firelight hydrangeas there and there. Uh, didn't add anything in over here. Still have the Amsonia string theory is blooming. 
and vanilla cream baptisias are blooming. Okay. Let's continue on. We've got uh, the roses, uh, Eustacia Vi. Those look good. So this area also got a major overhaul. I had three very large mudri type of grasses here, but the other two were spreading so badly. Um, they're just, again, the, the grass spreading was just taking over. I just had it with it. So I put my piece rose into a container. I added two spirea double play doozy. I added a morning light grass because I love grasses and I want every bed to have them. Um, I added three salvia pink profusions there. I added another little coneflower cantaloupe um, and Agastache uh, queen nectarine. So that should fill up that space really nicely where I moved the rose from next to the um, Raiden's favorite aster. So I think, again, this opened this up a little bit. These are the um, shrubs you saw me pinch. And you can see already how big they are. We've got Joe Pie weed here. We've got herb stone. We've got Henry Eilers. We've got Kareen. We've got uh, Hellenium. And like I said, Aster Red, Raiden's favorite. I'm loving the drops of Jupiter. Now, I'm just so excited. That, again, the juniper that was here was taken out. And again, oh, I just love it. So this is a non-vining clematis called Mrs. Robert Bryden, but I did put a new Etoile Voilette um, climbing, climbing high, um, clematis at the base of it, which will give it a little bit of shade, and but it'll give it a nice place to grow up. Again, that tower is from Gardener Supply. So I added some True Love Hellebores right there, three of them. We added a Hakanakloa grass. Uh, again, I don't know why that one's not doing too well, but we've also done a lot of digging around in here because um, I have the gooseneck loose strife. Again, that's incredibly invasive, and every year we try and pull more of it out. I put in some of the still be dark side of the moon right there. So this bed is good. Again, we've spent a ton of time pulling Pachysandra out of there. Um, so we have a little bit more room for the Solomon seal. Uh, the hookah is doing really well. Those are some more hellebores that I planted not all that long ago. And then lastly, underneath my service berry is a clematis called still waters that actually is blooming. Okay, you can see the greenhouse is pretty empty at this point. Like I said, it was like 120 degrees in there. Right now it's 80, um, but it's first thing in the morning. So what have I planted to the right of it? I added some yarrow pomegranate, three of those. I had to move the Let's Dance Big Band hydrangeas that were where the greenhouse is. So one of them is here. The other two are on the other side. I had an extra Cleome. Senorita Rosalita. So I just popped that in there. And then on this side, we put in some cat's pajamas, Nepeta, <coughs> excuse me, two goras, the pollen is killing me. Spun silk daisies I had to replace because they died. You can see all the Allium Mount Everest are blooming in here. So in order to, you know, cover their dying foliage, that's why I've added the Gora, and that's why I have the daisies and the Nepeta. So I have like five cat's pajamas, Nepeta in and around. I've also added in some uh, Rubum red fountain grass in a couple of spots. And check out this, it's haunted heart. Look at that gorgeous iris. I am so excited about the irises. I don't normally ever plant bearded irises, uh, again, because of all the bull damage that I have, but I've got to say I'm absolutely loving it. So that's what went into this bed. 
And again, I've got, you know, dahlias popped in and around in several places. Look how pretty that nine bark is. This is uh, Festivus Gold. And I, I love this one. Love it. It's put on a lot of growth. I'm not sure what's going on with Tiny Wine Gold. Because actually, I think Tiny Wine Gold is supposed to be even bigger. Uh, so it could be getting some damage, unfortunately. Some bowl pressure. Bowl pressure. Uh, it's a little shady here, so I'm not sure if you can see. Um, underneath the hawthorn, I have a bunch of primrose, bellerina pink, uh, epimedium, some hellebores, royal heritage, a heuchera called snow angel, a really pretty columbine. It's kind of on its way out at this point. And some burnet. One of them has already been eaten by a rabbit. And then again, some more geranium, um, perennial geranium. That one's called Bayakovo. Uh, what else went in here? Okay, so what went in here? We've got some replacements of Firefly Peach Sky Yarrow. Um, and a bunch of dahlias. Wee bit grumpy. Same thing, the one that got destroyed. I'm going to try and resurrect the other one, but I had no patience for it, so I just replaced it. Uh, I added in another Baptisia Pink Lemonade. Again, something else that did not survive. Reblooming Lilac from Proven Winners is actually reblooming, or is blooming now. The, the lilacs, the smell is just beautiful between that and the, the hawthorns. So pretty. The Koto Noito, Japanese maple, looking beautiful. The Catalpa is starting to fill out. And the Globemaster Alliums are in their prime right now. We got a Bobo Hydrangea in there to cover and to kind of cover the dying foliage, as well as catmint, as well as salvias and daylilies. This whole thing is my purple bed. <laughs> What's left to do today is I have uh, four new euphorbias, oh, three euphorbias and a new thalictrum to get in. And I overwintered my colocasias, so I've got those to get in the ground also. So that's today's project. My Aurelia is putting on some size and looking good. Let me show you the... Miss Kim lilacs. Oh, they're gorgeous. Oh my God. All the lilacs are starting to bloom. Check out Miss Kim. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Wow. Beautiful. And then I've got a couple other varieties of lilacs. Got one here. I've got a very big bush right here. And another Miss Kim over here. Now with any spring flowering shrubs, don't forget, don't cut these back until they finish blooming. But if you're gonna cut them for cut flowers, make a nice deep cut. Um, again, just like azaleas and forsythias, cut these after they bloom. Of course, the pollinators love these things. Just a view of the hawthorn trees. Viburnum, the Dawn Redwood. So you can see I use that yellow green as an accent all over. It really pulls your eye back or into a bed. The towers that my husband made, I'm loving them. They look great. And a place to sit that I have yet to sit in. <laughs> So if you remember, this was a brand new bed last year. So I'm still playing around with it, you know, to see what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. Underneath my nine marks, which really when they're loaded like they are today, uh, they really hang down pretty low. 
there's penstemum under there. <laughs> um, you know, I have some wee white hydrangeas, but I wanted to add um, some other things a little bit farther forward. So that's why I added the um, chorus uh, grass um, and I put in another geum. Uh, sometimes I put some annuals there, but uh, I only got to cutting one of these back. So the rest will have to wait till next year because now they're covered with pollinators and I'm not going near them. Of course, Ogon grasses. Uh, I would have put in more, but I couldn't find more. And back here is a new spirea. So I had a red spirea here for years. And again, things just, things just happen. Um, so I put in this nice yellow green accent, I hope. Um, this is a new spirea for me. I think it's called Glow Girl, um, between the lilacs. Let me stand back over here so maybe you can see it better. There it is right there. So I've got the lilacs. Um, nine barks. I only got... <laughs> copper wine I got that one cut um, and trimmed up but I did not get the summer wines continuing on the path the river birches are looking gorgeous I absolutely love them so I ended up putting right here in front of the peonies and coral charm is starting to bloom um, six height a uh, six coleus uh, the Color Blaze series, I absolutely love. Let me get on the other side. So we have Pineapple Brandy, and we have Wicked Witch. And I just love the combination of the two. But let's take a look at the Coral Charm. Oh, God, it's so beautiful. And people, don't don't be freaked out about ants. They just, they just love the sap. There's nothing wrong with it. Not gonna hurt. Um, and then right next to it, we have Festiva Mac. Oh no, this one is Sarah Bernhardt. Sorry, Here's Sarah Bernhardt. And then I've got Festiva Maxima next to that. And then back here. Oh, look how pretty. Now, if you'll remember, let me step back over here. So here's the cotinus that I did not cut back this year. I cut it back last year. Here's the one I did just cut back. And you can see it's completely leafed out. No issue whatsoever. It'll end up being as tall as that probably by the end of the season. Um, okay, I had some trouble already over here. <sighs> oh, goodness gracious. Something is already destroying the plants that I put in here. So I put in salvia, rock and deep purple, and I put in some supertunia blue veined. Um, some one was already eaten, and I can see that. Yep, look at that. You know, sometimes you just. Oh my goodness. Sometimes it's just not worth. <laughs> sometimes it's just not worth the effort. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, on this side of the path, I had a, a rummox that last year got eaten. These two are doing pretty well from last year, so I replaced that. The, my hibiscus is starting to leaf out. I added a phlox luminary backlight. My poppies. Uh, I grew poppies from seed this year, but the ones I had from last year seem to be spreading around and seem to be uh, actually okay. Another mum called Centerpiece, and then three, a still be dark side of the moon. There's another one hiding over there. And then here's a container with red fountain grass, the new Osteospermum Bright Lights Horizon, uh, Abiden's Goldilock Rocks, and a superbina peachy keen. So over here, uh, I always put in playing the blues salvia, could only find one. So this is called Wendy's Wish Salvia, is another annual, and then bubblegum, uh, supertunia bubblegum. So those five will fill this entire area up. 
So that's what's happening on the driveway bed. Right now we have um, this allium. Uh, I only know it by its original name, which is Bulgaricum. I think they've changed the name of this thing. Dutzia is blooming. This is the white one. So this one did not get the damage uh, from the freeze because it's a little more protected by the house. Where the pink one, which is over there in front of the quick fires, had a lot of damage. And it has some blooms on it, but I have to really cut that back. So the uh, red twig dogwoods are blooming here also, and we have some damage uh, on the leaves on the magnolia also from, from that frost. The apple, apple tree, salix. Oh, actually you saw me also cut this down to nothing and look at the size of it already. <clears throat> so I started the other day to cut, cut the uh, bottom branches that are re-sprouting, um, so I have to finish that the very large three Shenandoah grasses. Um, they've been here for probably from the beginning. They were part of my original design with the salvia caradonas. <laughs> so you can see with the grass gone, now the salvias are really taken over. Um, so it's gonna take a while for the Shenandoahs to put on some size, but the other ones needed to be divided so badly. They were absolutely full of weed grass and violet, uh, you know, the, those cr crappy violets that uh, find themselves all over and they've, they're t they take over like the, uh, you know, like the vinca and, you know, other perennial kind of type of stuff. It, it just, you know, becomes too invasive. So that's what I did there. And we're getting to the end. So I put in three drops of Jupiter here. I added one more creeping phlox because one of them somewhere along the line years ago got destroyed. Nothing happening over here. I've got Amsonia storm cloud right here. I've got Ver Verona castrum right there. Mock ar orange Philadelphus right there. Gonna be gorgeous. And oh my God, if you've never smelled one of those, I don't know if there's anything better. I mean, it, it trumps um, lilacs and the smell is just amazing. And then we're back down to the greenhouse. So um, I hope that was <laughs> interesting. So that's where I'm at. I'm just trying to get, I'm still, believe it or not, I'm still cleaning up beds. In an effort to try to be conscientious about the length of this video, because it's very long, um, I didn't go into enormous detail on plants. Anything you want to know, please let me know, or obviously you can just Google it. Almost, ev I think almost every single thing I put in was from Proven Winners. Some were from Annie's Annuals. Some were from Digging Dog Nursery. And some were from Avant Gardens. So there's a grand tour. Uh, like I said, I'm still cleaning up beds. Um, but I had to get this stuff in the ground. Stuff could not stay in the greenhouses anymore. They're better off outside. Um, and then I can just get to general maintenance and, you know, as things work and don't work, I can make changes through the year. Um, I've got vegetables to get in the ground. Um, going to do some, you know, colored vegetables to pop in places. I've got big artichoke. I've got some rhubarb, got some red leaf grasses, you know, to just put in that pop of red color. So I hope you found all this interesting. I think it's kind of long, so I apologize for that. Um, hope you had a great holiday weekend, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, hit that like button. And as always, also underneath the video, you'll see a list of uh, products that I really like from that are in my Amazon store. We absolutely love that Rubbermaid uh, plant cart. I mean, I think it's originally meant for garbage cans, but we absolutely love that thing. We have used it to schlep, you know, potting mix and uh, land and seed compost. Oh, I should mention everything, all the perennials that I planted got biotone and land and seed compost. The annuals didn't. Those just got like proven winners um, uh, fertilizer. And I think that's about it. So uh, I'll see you in the next video.